Okay, here we go with some graphing, which um, when I used graphing, when I learned graphing 10 plus years ago, it was, it was kind of hard, but it was cool, but it was fast, but now it's just awesome. So let me show you how it works. First of all, I want to add totals into these categories, and something I didn't show you on an earlier video is called the auto sum. And so when I click on the home tab here, I get this little guy right here, auto sum. So the way this work is, works is you click on the cell where you want the sum or the answer to be. And then come on over here and you can just click on auto sum which defaults to adding everything up or you can drop this down. You can see you can do average, count the number of rows or cells or whatever, min or max. So I'm going to say average, or excuse me, sum. I'm going to say sum. And it guesses that I want to add up these items which is correct. B4 through B8 is correct. So I'm going to hit enter here and it's done correctly. And now you see this number sign. A lot of times students freak out. There's no freak out necessary. Just double click right here between B and C when you get that single black line with the two arrows and it auto fits to the column. All that this means is that the row is too narrow. And so if you just either pull it out or auto fit it, it's going to be fine. So there it is. So again, let me show you this auto sum. You can select a particular thing or just click it. And it guesses at what it guesses what you want to add up. Now let's say you didn't want to add that number in for some reason. All you would do would be cl click on this one, hold it down and highlight the ones you do want to add. So in this case, I actually do want to add all of those. And I can hit enter. And so there it is. Again, too narrow, so let's widen that column. Now we could do auto sum all the way across or we can grab our fill handle which is my favorite little tool. You get the black little X in the corner there on top of that box and I'm going to drag it and it's going to add them all up. They're all too narrow so we'll fix them all. Great. Okay, same thing here. Auto sum it. It guessed correctly. I can hit enter and then I can fill it down. Very nice. Now let's say I want to check all my formulas at once really quickly and this is how I actually check your assignments. You can go here to formulas, show formulas and it always stretches it out. You lose the formatting here but that's not important. All I'm looking at are these formulas. Did you add up the right cell range? Are you using the right function? Which in this case the function is SUM for sum and then the cell ranges all look correct. But it's a very fast way to check all your formulas at one time. So that's your show formulas. And the quick key for that is control and tilde. And the tilde is the key that is right next to your number one. And it's to the left. And it has like a little squiggly line on it. That's called a tilde. It also has an accent mark on the lower part of the button. But so you say control squiggly line, which is your tilde. And that toggles back and forth between um, your formulas. No formulas, formulas. No formulas, formulas. Okay, I'll stop now. I think you got it. All right, so let's go into some graphing. Okay. All right, let's start with some graphing. So to build a graph, you're going to start here, which I know it seems strange to grab a blank cell, but you need to be able to grab these geographic areas because they are the labels for the numbers and you highlight down to grab the, um, whoops that didn't work, try it again. There we go. So I've got the different kinds of items and the ge geographic areas. And then I'll go here to insert and over here are your chart buttons. I love this new feature recommended charts because it's going to tell you what chart would, would make the data the most easy to read. And so I'm going to click through these and look at the different options. And I agree, I'm going to go with this one here. So it'll give me the different geographic areas and then the different items in colors. And then it generates your chart right there. Piece of cake. Okay, now there are a lot of things that you can do to the chart to make it look different. So you have all your chart styles here. You can drop these down and pick any of these. I like this one kind of dramatic. You can change your chart title. So I'm going to call it um, 
sales. So I just typed and hit enter and it automatically changed it because the chart item was selected. You can switch the columns and rows. So here we have the different kinds of items and then you have the different geographic areas and then you can switch it like that. So now the geographic areas are here and the items are down here. So it would depend on which data you um, think is more important. You can change the colors. And then you could also do a quick layout change and as you scroll over these it will show you the different options. And this button right here is the cha add chart um, elements. So here you could change the chart title. You have it above now, but you could put it a center overlay, which that one doesn't look very good, so I would go with this one. What other choices do I have here? The legend. So it's right now it's at the top. You could move it to the side or the bottom. That's a common one to change. I think that's it. Those are the ones I use most often. And so that's your, your basic bar chart. Now one thing that's important to keep in mind, if I build a chart and I grab the totals, let me show you what that looks like. Uh, well first of all, now it doesn't know what the, a good um, chart is because you've got too much data. You've got numbers that are being double counted. So see how the category here is um, totals is it dominates the chart and even this orange which is the division oh yeah division totals it throws everything off and so this chart right here is really hard to read compared to something like this where you have each item and the different geographic areas when you throw the totals in it just it throws the chart off so always if, if for some reason you did collect the totals when you're building the chart sometimes you can grab this corner piece and just move it back here so those totals get dropped off and now your chart is back to just the geographic areas and the items. So that's an important one to remember. Okay, let's take a look at pie graphs. So pie graphs are um, different because they need to equal 100%. So a pie graph is great for the monthly budget if you're going to do just the expenses. So let's say this is your budget. You're going to pick all of the expenses hold down the control button and then select all of the adjacent um, amounts of those expenses. So you have the home mortgage for 2000 insurance for that. This middle column isn't involved. If you used the yearly and monthly you can't use a pie graph. You have to use a bar or a, or a column. So now let's insert the and you look at re recommended charts again you get the pie graph or you could go here and, and go ahead and pick from the pie graph but I'll select that pie graph very nice and we have lots of choices what to make it look like and so I always suggest that you go in and play around with it a little bit pick the format you like the best um, when I'm working with a pie graph I like to change the labels the data labels which is here and this is kind of nice because you can just hover over these buttons and see what it will look like with the different amounts in there. And if um, if you don't like those, go to more data options, data label options. And now you've got lots of them. So I'm going to take um, I'm going I would like to see the percentage, not the value. And then I'd like to see the series name. No, not the series name. The category name. So I know the cell phone's four percent, car payments ten percent, etc. So you can change them around. This one is already set to best fit, which is good. And then I'm going to get rid of the legend here by just selecting it and hitting delete on my keyboard because I've got it um, built in here to the pie graph. So that's one way to. I'm going to get rid of this. So that was under chart elements and data labels. Those are specifically for your pie graph. And of course, I'm going to change the chart title here too to um, December. So that would show it as my December monthly budget. 
Again, you can do the same things with switching things around, um, changing the type, and that sort of thing. Um, one thing that's interesting here is the Move Chart feature. If you select that, you can put your chart on a separate sheet. And so maybe I name this one December Chart, and I hit OK. And now I see it's here um, as its own uh, spreadsheet in the workbook. So here's my budget, and the graph is not there anymore because I've moved it onto this one. Okay, I think that's all you need to know on graphing to get started. Have fun, and I will see you in class.